What's going on guys? And in this video I want to cover a pretty basic concept, but in my opinion it's probably the most important concept when it comes to audio recording and mixing great music. So one of the most important things that's overlooked um, is, is, is a, a step that is so valuable and so important, um, but because it's not like quote unquote fun, um, it just gets forgotten about. It, it, it just kind of gets pushed aside. Um, and I really think that that's unfortunate because a lot of people end up ruining mixes and ruining songs um, because they just skip this essential step. So I want to share that with you today. I also want to let you know, please watch to the very end because um, if you watch this video all the way through, I've got something I want to give you absolutely free, uh, no strings attached. I just want to give you something to help you uh, get on the right track and get on the right path to creating better mixes. So, gain staging. Uh, there's so many different, um, so many different opinions about gain staging and and what it is, why you do it, if it's important, if it's not important, uh, how you do it, uh, blah blah blah. Um, anyway, I just wanted to quickly share my process with you on what gain staging actually is. Um, why you do it and and uh, the benefit of it. So just a real quick history lesson. Um, back long time ago, in the long, long ago, uh, in the time before time, when uh, studios were nothing but, you know, analog gear and big tape machines and big consoles and all this stuff, um, the gear itself created a lot of noise during the recording process so there was always this this fight between the gear and the music you know trying to drown out the 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 the, the sound floor the noise floor and so um by the way this is like not a comprehensive history lesson this is just a very basic uh abbreviated rundown of, of how this came about so anyway the ogs of of audio engineering um were recording music at a very, very hot level. So very high gain, very loud, um, just under the peak, you know, just under clipping. Um, and if they did clip a little bit, it was okay because it, it, it created that vintage, saturated, nice sound that we've all come to know and love. Anyway, um, the number they came up with that was like, quote unquote, ideal to record at was right around negative 18 dB. So if you record right around negative 18 dB, that's more or less the sweet spot, the coveted sweet spot that they all talk about. You've probably heard that number. You've probably heard people reference it as the sweet spot or the magic number. Um, but what they never tell you is why, like why, which is important to me. My The way I am, my personality, I don't know about you, let me know in the comments, but my personality, I don't want to know what, I want to know why. Um, and through my research, through my experience, what I come up with was what I'm about to show you. So fast forward a little bit, all of our digital DAWs, you know, the, our digital audio workstations and our digital plugins and our digital consoles and all this stuff are essentially emulations and copies of all of the old analog gear. So the, all of these plugins and all of these consoles are still designed around that same concept that, you know, quote unquote, negative 18 dB is the, is the coveted sweet spot. So what does that mean? Why do they, why do you, what does it matter? Well, when you record a track, ideally this would all be done by the way at like the recording process, but that never happens because there's so many variables. There's so many, you know, there's so many variables. There's so many things that could, that could change that as you're recording you know, you could set the level on a, on a snare drum all day long, but when the guy sits behind the drum set and actually plays the song through, he's probably going to be hitting his snare drum a little bit differently than he did during his little sound check. Let's be real. So, when you gain stage, what you're doing is you're making sure that nothing is going to be clipping and you're going to have enough what they call headroom on your master bus because you're going to be adding plugins. You're going to be adding all of these different things, compressors, EQ, all of this stuff. And why does it matter? Well, here's what people don't ever mention 
is that every time you add a plugin, you're adding gain. You see this right here? This is gain. So if I play this track, I'll just play this right now. Hopefully that didn't blow your ears out. If I play that track, you notice it was it was what? Right around negative right around negative twenty-four, twenty-two, somewhere right there. So if you turn your EQ on and auto, now where's it gonna be at? Now where is it at? Now is it like negative what 14 13 somewhere in there so you added a bunch of gain you could do that manually sure you do it manually but you're gonna have to add some level of gain something is gonna be added to this plugin same thing with the compressor you do a compressor compressor is the big one you set your compressor up you've got your drum what is that a kick out we do a kick do a metal bass drum preset Look, look how much gain was added to that to that plugin. So now what what was at negative twenty-four is now going to be at what? Negative nineteen, somewhere in there. And so the more plugins you add, the more gain obviously gets added. Well, um the ideally the 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 ideal uh, optimum level is like I said right around negative 18 because you would have to add a significant amount of gain for you to be clipping over here and and clipping and peaking and, and squashing everything in a disgusting way so my process real quick um, about how I do this is in studio one you can click in like the 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 little box here where it you know references the volume um, this isn't gain this is volume this is gain there's always a couple different ways to adjust gain you can do gain here you can pull the track down up or down a little bit um, you can use a mix tool I'm not sure why you would ever use a mix tool to be honest with you if you know leave me a comment because um, a mix tool is just a plugin that literally does this right there so I'm not sure why you would ever do that Anyway, so what I'll do, when I gain stage, I will go through, put everything at zero, unity, whatever you call it, zero, 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 all of these at zero, every track at zero, um, and... This guy's got a huge drum set. He's such a good drummer. Um, I found him on Fiverr, by the way. Great drummer. Cool guy. Um, anyway, I'll go through, I'll put all these at zero. Um, the panning really doesn't matter because it just doesn't. Um, don't worry about this. This is nothing. Um, so I'll go through and I will... I'm going to solo all of this so you can hear it all. Um, actually, no. Now, I mute everything. And why do I mute everything? I mute everything because I don't want there to be any bias when I'm, when I'm adding or subtracting gain. Because what I'm about to do is I'm about to hit play. And I'm about to watch all of these lights. And I'm about to adjust gain, however I do that, adjust. As you can see, this isn't great because it's clipping over here. So I'd have to go through, adjust all of these, all of the gain, to where it's right, right where I want it to be. Right where I want it to be, etc., etc. Ideally... 
Um, you would do this in the loudest part of the song. This song is kind of repetitious in terms of music, like musicality. Like it's just um, the the parts, the heavier parts are pretty repetitious. So there's not there's not a lot of dynamic. So I just I just picked a spot and I'm just looping that over and over again. Um, so yeah, go through, adjust the gain. However, you do that in your DAW. Um, and make sure that nothing is, you know, everything is right around that negative 18 dB spot. Uh, and then from there, it's just a matter of pulling your faders down one by one or all at once if you group everything together like a smart guy. Um, pull everything down, unmute, then you hit play. Um, also, a quick side note, make sure this is on pre-fader metering. Otherwise, your fader position will, uh, will affect the gain. You want to be measuring the signal in, not the signal f at the fader, if that makes any sense. So you want to be measuring what, what the signal is. I'll show you right here. You notice how when it was, oops, notice how when it was uh, post fader metering, all the gain, all the, the meters went down. That's because you're, you're measuring after the fader. You want to be measuring before the fader. The, before the fader is the input gain, essentially, the input level. So anyway, um, from there, like I said, you would pull everything down and then start actually mixing the track. Um, at least that's what I would do. Um, I would also do this, uh, avoid um, any, like wh wherever you're looping. Me personally, I loop and will do this on a section where there are no vocals. Um, that's just my method um, and I think that works better. Uh, but anyway, um, that's pretty much it. That's kind of my process for gain staging. Um, as a thank you for watching this video, I want to give you uh, a free gift. It's called the Gain Staging Guide. It's kind of a supplement to this. Um, it just it's it's in PDF form. You can find it at my website, uh, gofrettofret.com. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it's called the Gain Staging Guide. Uh, it's a quick read. Uh, you can read it, and and, and not very long. Um, it's not DAW specific, uh, so just a fair warning. It's not like a tutorial for um, any kind of DAW. It's just um, kind of a supplement to this process and just, just to help get you on the right path to creating a better mix. So anyway, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything I post. Um, and we will see you in the next one. Happy mixing.